Hi everyone, I am Andrea Fornacciari and I am a PhD student uh, of the University of Modena Reggio Emilia. And uh, I collaborate with uh, Dana Incorporated uh, in particular regarding the project that I'm uh, illustrating to you today. The following slide uh, summarizes the activity carried out in collaboration with EngineSoft uh, using uh, Mode Frontier, that is the optimization process for uh, the design of the Dana New Independent Suspension Axle for of highway vehicles. I think everyone here knows uh, Mode Frontier, but in few words, it is a software used for multidisciplinary optimization that allows the integration of third-party tools, the complete process automation, and the facilitation in decision-making relying on the result. An executive summary of the presentation is reported in this slide. The scope of the activity uh, is then indicated, that is to define an optimization methodology for an off-highway front suspension, leveraging uh, different simulation models to evaluate the vehicle's dynamic performances. The main target and achievements are reported to, which are the definition of the optimization methodology, the realization of a sensitivity analysis thanks to the evaluation of a high number of different solutions, the identification of the optimized solution relying on com comfort, handling, and traction parameters and on system cost, and the complete process automation. So the, we'll just be a brief introduction to the problem and then the project scenario to develop in a mode frontier. Subsequently, the multi-environment simulation models will be presented. These are, the, these are mandatory to the integration in mode frontier and to the process optimization. Lastly, I'm showing you the conclusion. Independent suspension is any vehicle suspension system that allows each wheel on each wheel on the same axle to move vertically uh, in the, in, independently of each wheel of the same axle to move vertically independently from the, the other. An example reacted to a bump on the road. This is contrasted with a rigid axle suspension system. Uh, in which uh, the wheels are linked and the movement on one side affects the wheel on the other side. Independent suspension typically offers better ride quality and uh, handling and traction characteristic, both in automotive and in off-highway. On the other hand, these, these systems require additional engineering effort and cost in development versus non-independent ones. Among these systems, hydrochromatic suspension are of particular importance in a highway. The design of these solutions involves the integration of both the mechanical part of the suspension with its own architecture, which affects the kinematics and dynamic features uh, of the system, with the hydraulic system. Uh, this last one is used not only to define the system stiffness and damping, but also to manage the leveling uh, maneuver and choose between different uh, working conditions. This activity positioned precisely in this context. Indeed, it concerns what we call advanced front suspension system, which is a hydropneumatic independent sus suspension system. This is a multidisciplinary and not straightforward activity where the performance improvements must coexist with the system constraint, resulting from the hydraulic system, the encumbrances, and cost. Because of this, a uh, non-automated design process is strongly based on experience and on an iterative approach. This leads uh, to low effectiveness and low efficiency. The solution is thus a multidisciplinary optimization approach, which is exactly the field where Mode Frontier works. In this slide, the project scenario to develop in Mode Frontier is briefly reported. The process core and objective is thus to improve the performances of the reference solution found by hand with the, with, with the automated process. The integration of the several uh, third-party tools uh, 
uh, as a parametric model developing Adam's uh, Amazim and Crow is mandatory to do so. The main process, targets, and constraints are reported to. In particular, the targets are the optimization of some suspension kinematic aspects, the improvement of dynamic behavior, and the cost minimization. The constraints uh, were chosen in according to a sensitivity analysis carried out on the system. In the following slide, uh, the main models integrated in the process are presented. The multibody simulation necessary to consider all the suspension kinematics and dynamic aspects are many, but we can divide them into three macro areas. The suspension kinematic test, which are vertical parallel wheel travel, uh, vertical opposite wheel travel and steering displacement. Uh, these are necessary to evaluate the suspension kinematic features. The VA call model analysis to know the VA call agent modes, the first natural frequencies, and the ideal values of stiffness and damping in the different working conditions. And then the dynamic uh, performance in simulation, which are necessary to assess the vehicle dynamic behavior. These are an ISO 5008 for camper, a ram steering and moose test for handling, and a four poster test for traction. The main process objective function are outputs of these simulations while other results are used as input for other numerical models. For example, stiffness and damping values found in model analysis are target for the hydraulic sizing carried out with the Hamazin model. SimCenter Amazon was thus used to create several lamp parameter models of the hydraulic system. As said, these models are used to size the hydraulic circuits starting from the input coming out from the model analysis and check the minimum and maximum working pressure in, uh, values. Furthermore, these models are necessary to evaluate the actual curves of stiffness and damping, which are of course different from the ideal values. Lastly, we had to integrate also a parametric CAD model developed in Creo. Creo. From the detailed 3D model, we obtain a simplified model used to evaluate the eventual static or dynamic interferences, starting from the architecture hot point position and from the hydraulic components and cambrances. Now we can move on to the integration in Frontier. The first concept workflow is reported in this slide. However, a single workflow for the whole optimization will involve a high number of input variables and a high number of objectives. This would lead to the need to evaluate a high number of designs to ensure a robust optimization. Moreover, some of the simulations are quite long in terms of CPU time, and it would be necessary to run these simulations for all the design to evaluate. In few words, it would be a low efficiency process. So we decide to split the workflow into three loops, each of which is specialized for the optimization of, of one or more aspects of the system. In particular, the first loop concerned the definition of the suspension kinematics. The second mainly concerned the sizing of the hydraulic system. And the third one concerned the definition of the damping requirements of the system. This subdivision allowed for fewer inputs per loop, fewer objectives per loop, and therefore less design to evaluate per loop. Let's start from the loop one. As mentioned, uh, this loop concerned the definition uh, of the suspension kinematics. So those that are the main hard points of the chosen architecture, which is a, a double wishbone one. The conceptual, work, conceptual workflow of loop one is shown in the slide. It has as variable input some independent coordinates and some kinematic requirements. These enter into a spreadsheet to be organized and for the consequent evaluation of the remaining dependent R points. After that, the solution is examined both with the kinematic simulations in Adams and with the CAD check that there are no interferences. 
the main objectives on which uh, this optimization is based are the improvement of two parameters appropriately chosen after a sensitivity analysis which are without going into depth uh, the steady state uh, role stability factor and the camber loss the main constraints that determine whether to consider the current solution are the absence of uh, interferences and the achievement of uh, minimum values of some kinematic characteristics. This slide uh, shows the passage from the conceptual to the actual workflow developed in Mode Frontier, in which the various necessary tools are integrated. In the first block, uh, the input and uh, the spreadsheet. To then move on to the kinematic simulations in Adams, and finally to the control on the interference with the CAD model. However, uh, due to the non trivial nature of the project, the optimization tr strategy required first a robust optimization to identify all the optimum cluster, and then an accurate one to identify the best solution with more precision. The slide shows some results of this uh, optimization. It can be easily seen how the reference solution found by hand before Mode Frontier turns out to be quite far from the Pareto Frontier, which is the set of the optimal solution. In fact, having more than uh, one objective function, uh, there will not be a single best solution, but uh, several. A solution belongs to the Pareto frontier when it is not possible to improve one feature without worsening another. Because of this, uh, mode frontier then leaves uh, the choice of which direction to take to the user. Loop 2 is presented in a totally similar way. The purpose of this loop uh, is to define both uh, the position of some missing R points in loop 1 and the ideal stiffness and damping, so that the first natural frequency of the system is minimized. After passing through the same spreadsheet of loop one, the examinated solution is subjected to the VFO model analysis for different load conditions. Downstream of these, uh, there is uh, then an asset optimization for the hydraulic circuit sizing. And uh, uh, starting from uh, the information coming out from the model analysis, of course. In particular, the stiffness part of the hydraulic system is dimensioned in this loop, starting from the preloads on the hydraulic actuators and the ideal stiffnesses from the various load condition of the vehicle, while the damping part will be considered in loop three. The main objectives are, as mentioned, to minimize the first natural frequency of the system, always staying above the motion sickness values, of course, to achieve uh, the ideal stiffness uh, for the various load conditions, and to do so by minimizing the overall uh, dimension and cost of the hydraulic system. The main constraints, on the other hand, are, in addition to the control or interferences, uh, the achievement of minimum values of some uh, suspension features, and not to exceed the upper and lower limit of uh, working pressure in the hydraulic circuit. As done before, this slide illustrates the transition from the conceptual to the actual workflow. After a first part similar to loop one, there are two nested optimization regarding uh, vehicle model analysis and hydraulic sizing. Lastly, the interfering interferences check uh, is repeated. Like loop one, a uh, robust optimization was performed first and then a more accurate one. The slides show the most interesting results in our opinion, which are the ones relating to the optimization of the hydraulic circuit. As mentioned, this has been optimized starting from the results of the model analysis, which made it possible to have a map of target stiffnesses to be reached as function of the operating condition of the vehicle. For example, empty vehicle weight, cross vehicle weight, and different uh, percentages of balancing. It was therefore possible to define a function called penalty function, whose value is zero only if uh, all the stiffness targets are satisfied. While the farther it is from zero, the farther it will be from these target values. The objectives of this optimization were therefore 
the minimization of this function value and the cost minimization. Among all the Pareto Frontier solution, the one marked in figure is of particular interest. It can be easily seen that despite the same cost uh, as the reference solution found manually, the performance is much better. This is also highlighted in the graph on the right, in which in terms of quality, it can be seen how the area of the stiffness obtainable from the optimal solution, the blue one, is much greater than the reference one, the orange one. All this thanks to the variation of geometric parameters parameters and not such as the dimension of the hydraulic actuator, the pre-charge pressure of the accumulator, etc. Finally, loop three is introduced. As anticipated, the topic of this loop is the definition of the parameter concerning the system damping. The starting point is the ideal minimum and maximum uh, damping values obtained from the model analysis of loop uh, two. We decide to divide the workflow into two sub-optimization, which are first uh, selection of orifices and uh, damping valves, and the subsequent optimization based uh, on the system dynamic behavior. The first has at its uh, objective the sizing continuous uh, of the hydraulic part uh, relating uh, to the damping and the following choice of the most suitable valves taken from a portfolio. Starting from these valves, uh, the goal of the second sub-optimization is to improve the vehicle dynamic performance in comfort handling and traction. By varying the power supply currents uh, of the valves, uh, which define the dumping, uh, dumping of the system, of course. The other parameters are obviously taken as constant, uh, starting from the results of the previous loop. As for the other loops, uh, the mode frontier workflow uh, follows the conceptual one, and it is uh, illustrated here with the division into two sub optimization. For the dynamics aspects of comfort handling and traction, it was necessary to answer different uh, nested optimization. Precisely because of this division into uh, two sub optimization, the optimization stra strategy differs a little from the previous loops. A robust optimization coupled with an accurate one was chosen for the first sub optimization, while for the second one, instead, a DOE sequence, DOE sequence was chosen. That is a, an evaluation of uh, all possible valve combinations starting from the portfolio. Thanks to an if node in the workflow, then only the combination present in the list of best paths passed to the nested optimization for the dynamic performance performances, which return, as mentioned, the search of current. Unfortunately, we have not yet complete the second part of the loop, also due to the choice of the nested optimization algorithm, so there are no particular results to show yet. What we expect to find, however, is a map of optimal currents that optimize the dynamic behavior of the vehicle, according to the selector menu. So, in uh, summary, what have we achieved using this software? We first managed to define a multi-objective optimization methodology, which was the main aim of the project. This will allow us not to rely on experience and the iterative approach, but on a statistical and automated approach. We have been able to evaluate approximately more than 15,000 solutions for now, thanks to which it has also been possible to carry out sensitivity analysis on the various parameters involved. Obviously, it is unthinkable to be able to evaluate such a large number of solutions by hand. Furthermore, this number is only indicative as Mod Frontier has potentially no limit on this aspect. We were then able to identify or in any case will be complete at the end of loop two, what are the best solution in the various loop for the Pareto frontier. Considering as main parameter, the vehicle dynamic performances in terms of comfort, handling, traction, and on trust. 
Furthermore, Mod Frontier has allowed us to create a fully automated process in which the user should only intervene in the post-processing phase once the optimization is complete. Last but certainly not least, all of, uh, all of this study has allowed a significant increase in know-how, both regarding obviously the approach to multi-objective optimization, but also specifically with uh, regard to this activity of designing independent suspension actors. So uh, that's the end of my speech. And if uh, there are any questions, let me know. And thank you very much for your attention.